I've mentioned in past reviews, every once in a long while does a movie come out that's so good I stop taking notes in the middle of the film and just enjoy the ride. Joker, Ford v Ferrari, and Dune are a few recent examples, while almost everything else has me taking copious notes that look like I plagiarized the entire screenplay. Well, here we are again with the former, after years of waiting, Denis Villeneuve returns with the continuation of his sci-fi epic. Dune Part 2 continues with the plight of the remaining Atreides, Lady Jessica and her son Paul. They travel with and integrate into the Fremen way of life, hoping to rally the oppressed people of Arrakis against the Harkonnens, who once again rule the planet with an iron fist. While Paul passes the array of tests with increasing popularity, he also gains followers, believing him to be the Lizan al Gaib, basically their messiah, who will lead the Fremen to paradise. Rising through the ranks, Paul leads the Fremen into guerrilla warfare against the Harkonnens to reduce spice production. However, the Harkonnens have increased their attacks to stop the Fremen resistance and get the production back under control. With mounting pressure and limited resources, Paul must step up to the plate to meet this challenge head-on as a duke, unify the Fremen as their messiah, and unlock his potential as the Kwisatz Haderach to protect his loved ones, free the planet, and stop the Harkonnens once and for all. That's about as far as I want to go with the summary, as this movie deserves to be supported in theaters. Now, when you think action star or leading man, Timothy Chalamet is probably not the first on that list. Dude's built like a twink with tofu for bones, but there is no denying he's a good actor. I've thought so for a long time, ever since The King on Netflix, and my belief is vindicated by the scene where Paul unifies the Fremen under one banner. Any actor with the right director can exert great performances and can become a renowned combo like DiCaprio and Scorsese. Chalamet and Villeneuve may be just that. And everybody else does give good performances, certainly nearing, if not rivaling, Chalamet's. Take Austin Butler as Fade Raltha. Butler's performance is fantastic, and he brings an air of menace with him, and he's left so many women online apparently wanting that he could bring oceans to Arrakis with his Super Saiyan 3 eyebrows. Another element of such connection is the emotional consistency. There is always a time and place for characters to make comments or jokes that fit a setting, but only in that setting. When retarded Reddit dialogue is used at the wrong time, it can deflate the mood faster than blurting out someone else's name. Dune Part 2 doesn't have much, if any, in the way of wasted dialogue. Paul, preparing to ride the sandworm, sees a few jokes to help alleviate the tension of the dangerous task he's about to undergo. But when the worm comes out and it's larger than almost any other the Fremen have seen, everyone is scared shitless as they watch this little 1-1 legendary creature take on this 10-10 with trample. And you may very well believe he's riding the sandworm for a brief moment because the visual effects are stupendous. Dune blew most people away with the quality of the VFX on screen. Everything from the minor and my personal favorite effect, the body shields, up to the immense sandworms and ships. There were brief moments that seemed just a hair off, like the sandworm swallowing the spice harvester, but otherwise were deserving of the Oscar in this department. Part 2, in my best observation, is superior to the previous film in this way. I ain't a special effects guy, but I'm usually pretty good at finding a pixel out of place. I didn't detect anything wrong, and I'm interested to see actual VFX artists discuss the work behind this movie, because with a production budget of 190 million, I have an awful lot of questions for the rest of Hollywood. Looking at you, Disney. My praise aside, there are of course issues, and things that aren't quite my taste. Case in point, Christopher Walken as the Padishah Emperor. It would have been great to see him fat boy slim it up high on spice, but he was born at the height of World War II, so to see him get down on one knee without calling life alert in itself is a miracle. And being born, raised, and lived in New York for as long as he has, his accent doesn't go away. While he does make an attempt to restrain himself, and he is, of course, giving a decent performance, he does look and sound like he can't wait to just go home and fold a pizza. The movie also bogs down quite a bit throughout Act 2. The original Dune novel was three books in one, Dune, Muad'Dib, and Prophet. The 2021 remake spans the first book and about a quarter of the second. This means Part 2 has to cover nearly two books with with only 10 minutes more runtime. This would be like trying to cram two full games of Warhammer inside of three hours. So understandably, 
time needs to be saved. In the case of Dune, entire swaths of the book are ripped out like you're speedrunning a game of operation. The result is a drawn-out Act 2, eating away at Act 3's time frame, which runs quite short. So if you were bored by Dune, Part 2 isn't really helping its own case. Unlike The Hobbit, the scope and scale of Dune actually requires three movies, or else important moments or even lesser characters will be lost in translation. This is the same issue Netflix's live-action Avatar did, condensing and overlapping hours of story, which leads into another issue inaccuracies. So much happens between books 2 and 3, Villeneuve forces himself to skip over details both major and minor like we do user license agreements. Combine this with the tinge of poison that is DEI, and it leads to stark differences. Take Paul's mother, Lady Jessica. Dune did a pretty good job of portraying her as the protective mom and guiding influence that she is in the book. But in this one, after she drinks the Kool-Aid, she's no longer a helicopter mama, and it's time to sink or swim. She's kind of conniving as the memories and power get to her head, while in the novel, she loves Paul, but grows to fear his powers due to how far into the future he can see. The best way I can break this down is to exemplify Aragorn. Book and movie Aragorn are parallels. They are proud, strong, selfless, but differ on confidence. Book Aragorn openly states his ancestry, accepting his destiny, while movie Aragorn is reserved and worries the power of the throne will corrupt him. These parallels cross the goal line by converging. Lady Jessica, on the other hand, are parallels that diverge before the goal. Again, this is an issue of accuracy, not quality. Part 2 is well written and acted, but loyalty to the novel worsens like your vision after you said no more drinks five drinks ago. And that's my best guess to why the fuck Denis turned Shawnee into a 10th wave Fremenist. Shawnee is never this adversarial with Paul, and the changes made here are going to lead to wild differences, as it looks like Villeneuve is going to make Dune Messiah to complete this as a trilogy. Now, I I won't go any further, as that requires spoilers. So, in the end, the question must be asked. Does Dune Part 2 live up to the extreme hype and ascend to the highest tier of movie greatness? Not quite. However, it is still a very good movie. The story accuracy drifts like a nodding off driver, but otherwise hits the requisite main beats. The visuals are spectacular, putting almost everything Hollywood has produced for the last 10 years to torturous shame. Everyone gives great performances, in particular Chalamet, Bardem, and Butler. The practical effects are great, but more importantly, the sets and on-location filming really helps immerse you, unlike the mass-produced green screen garbage most movies of abuse like Rooster Teeth's former VP did his ex-wife. If you have the chance, I suggest you see Dune Part 2. If not just because these two films are mostly solid on their own merits, then do so because it sends a message to Hollywood. Like Godzilla Minus One, quality trumps quantity, and audiences have been starved for far too long. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.